My name is Ariel Tabson, and I am the Public Information Officer for the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Welcome to Talking Traffic Safety. Today we are airing live from the Tennessee Department of Safety's Facebook page. Feel free to explore the department's page for public safety information and resources. Today's episode will feature two speakers serving as subject matter experts. I will serve as your moderator by presenting topics and questions for our experts to discuss. If you would like to participate, please submit your questions in the comments section. Each question that I mentioned will appear on the screen below. If we don't get to your question during the show, email info at tntrafficsafety.org so we can answer you. Thank you for joining us. We're very excited to be here today. Now let's introduce our panel. Our first guest is Buddy Lewis, Director of the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Welcome, Director. Tell us about you and what you do. Thank you, Ariel. It's a pleasure to be with you all today, and it's a pleasure to be with everyone across the state of Tennessee today to discuss traffic safety issues here in Tennessee. Let me take a, just a moment to tell you a little bit about the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Uh, we are one of four divisions within the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security, and our purpose is to advocate for traffic safety. And we do this by changing driver behavior. The, uh, uh, and we do this by increasing education, enforcement, and community partnerships. Uh, Tennessee Highway Safety Office works in tandem with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to implement statewide programs. And these programs that we administer and, and start and begin across the state are uh, federally funded. Uh, we are absolutely proud of the work that every partner does across the state of Tennessee. Uh, we have partners in all regions of the state. Uh, this year, we have implemented 382 grants, totaling uh, $22.5 million. Uh, we, we believe that building partnerships by relationships is the key, and we are absolutely thrilled to be here today to talk about traffic safety issues in Tennessee. And I'm honored to be the director of the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Thank you. Thank you, Director Lewis. Our second speaker is Derek Stewart, Colonel of the Tennessee Highway Patrol. Welcome, Colonel. Tell us about you and, and tell us about what you do. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for having us on. Um, I'm Derek Stewart, I am the Colonel uh, and I have the awesome privilege of leading the men and women of the THP. We are the most recognizable state law enforcement agency in Tennessee. We have troopers assigned in all 95 counties. We enforce federal and state laws all across our state. Um, thank you for having us. Thank you, Colonel. It's uh, great to have you both here today. And, and the Tennessee Highway Patrol is also a division within the Department of Safety. So we're all family here and we're all here to share, share the same message and to keep drivers safe. So let's go ahead and begin the discussion. Director Lewis, I'd like to begin with you. Tell us what is the purpose of today's conversation? The purpose of today's conversation is basically to have a candid conversation about the issues that are uh, prevalent across Tennessee as far as traffic safety. Uh, several weeks ago, Commissioner Jeff Long uh, asked uh, and, and told, advised the Colonel and myself to kind of put together something to uh, get across the state of Tennessee and send a message that we are very concerned about the fatality rate that we're having in Tennessee and that we want to do something about it. So the purpose of this today is to start that process and to uh, just to share some things of concern that we have across the state of Tennessee as far as traffic uh, safety goes. Uh, there's been an increase in traffic fatalities this year. Uh, and and you, you, you think that, wonder why that is because of the pandemic that we're under. The situation is, is that people are working from home. Uh, they're in quarantine. They're not traveling as many miles on the state of Tennessee roadways. And the fact, the fact that we have increased our fatality rate this year so far is very alarming to us. In fact, as of today, we've had 975 fatalities in Tennessee compared to this time last year 
was 920, uh, 925. So we are 50 fatalities higher this year than what we were on this date last year. And this is very alarming. That's 50 people who have died uh, due to traffic uh, issues, uh, whether it be speeding, whether it be distracted driving, whether it be uh, all sorts of things uh, that, that cause fatalities on our roadways. So our goal here in Tennessee is to help. Our Tennessee Highway Safety Office is here to help. We, we understand how serious this problem is and we want to make certain that everyone across Tennessee understands how serious the problem is. We care about the safety and well-being of everyone who uses our roadways in Tennessee, and we need everyone to be more aware and work harder to protect each other. The information that you shared is, is very important because people probably didn't realize that during COVID and, and quarantine and people working from home, that there would be as much traffic. So you wouldn't think there would be so many fatalities. So I want to ask you, Colonel Stewart, what are the current traffic safety issues that we're seeing in Tennessee? Thank you for that question. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has really resulted in lower traffic counts on the roadways in Tennessee, not just in Tennessee, but really throughout the country. But here, here in Tennessee, our, our traffic counts are much lower when, when you compare it to the same time period in 2019. With that, we have witnessed greater speeds. We've, we've witnessed more aggressive and reckless drivers. We've also witnessed more drivers willing to try to outrun law enforcement. Mm -hmm. As of October uh, the 26th, as of yesterday, there have been 141 fatal crashes involving speeding in Tennessee. This time last year, there was 121. That's a 17% increase. Higher than average speeds have occurred on sections of interstate and multi-lane roadways. And what the, our message to all the citizens that's driving down the roadways of Tennessee, yes, COVID-19 has really impacted us in a very significant way, but excessive speed is not our new normal. We expect you to slow down, slow down obey the speed limit. In 2019, there was also uh, uh, data set up shows us that there was 23,700 crashes involving distracted drivers in Tennessee. On average, that's about 65 crashes every single day. This year, we've seen 123 uh, pedestrian fatalities in Tennessee. This time last year, there was 117. And finally, this year, 315 people who have died in traffic crashes in Tennessee involved a passenger that was not wearing a seatbelt. This time last year, that number was 265. That's a 19% increase over last year. And these numbers are not actually just numbers. These numbers are actually people. These are lives lost. These are families that's been devastated. Overall, crashes in Tennessee are down by 8%. However, Fatal crashes are up by 5%. The vast majority of this increase in fatal crashes has occurred in our urban areas. We, the THP, we are very concerned about people dying on the roadways in Tennessee, especially in those incidences where we believe that they are entirely preventable. We are examining everything that we can influence, such as our enforcement, our education, and lastly, our efforts. THP will be working very diligently to help reduce the number of crashes, but we need your help. Hmm. Thank you, Colonel. You mentioned quite a few traffic safety issues, not just speeding, but distracted driving and pedestrian issues and seatbelt usage. So let's, let's kind of talk about that more. Director Lewis, why is speeding so dangerous? Well, speeding is a type of aggressive driving behavior. And uh, speeding drivers are almost three times more likely to be involved in a serious injury crash or a fatal crash. Uh, speeding not only threatens their lives, the driver's lives, and the passengers in their vehicles' uh, lives, but it also threatens the safety and lives of everyone that they are around. In other words, every time they pass a vehicle, every time they come close to a vehicle, if they're exceeding the speed limit, 
uh, then they are putting those people's lives in jeopardy as well. Speeding lowers your reaction time. Speeding increases the risk of losing control of your vehicle. In other words, if you're going real fast, you're not going to have the control of that vehicle like you should if you were driving uh, a, a lower speed. Uh, speeding also reduces the effectiveness of the uh, occupant protection equipment, such as seat belts, the safety equipment that is installed by the manufacturers in the vehicles that are there for your safety are, are the, the effectiveness of those, uh, uh, that equipment is, is greatly reduced because of a fast speed. You know, a speed limit, uh, a speed limit is posted because it's not just because of a, of a figure that someone pulled out of a hat. A uh, speed limit is posted because of the engineers who built the roadways. They designed that roadway to be safe at a maximum speed. And that maximum speed is the speed limit. So if you go above that speed limit, you're going against what the engineers of that roadway have built that roadway for in a safe manner. So it is very important that we uh, stress that safe driving is, is ultimately the responsibility of the driver. The speed limit has got to be uh, adhered to so that uh, we can save lives and, and uh, uh, keep fatal crashes from happening. Mm. Thank you for sharing that information. Colonel Stewart, why do you think that people are speeding so much right now? Actually, I think uh, a lot of people are trying to take advantage of a very bad situation. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has called us all to change the way we go about doing our business. Uh, that Im impacted us early on. We had fewer traffic stops that we were making uh, because we, we were uh, having shortages with, with hand sanitizer. We were having shortages with, with masks. We have plenty of masks now. We have plenty of hand sanitizer. So those individuals that chooses to violate the speed limit, we will issue you a socially distanced, very expensive fine should you choose to break the speed limit. That's very interesting that you say that because people probably do have the impression that just because it's COVID that law enforcement is not enforcing the law and that's not true whether it's Tennessee Highway Patrol or it's local law enforcement, we know that they are all actively doing their part to keep our roadways safe. So people do need to be mindful of that and you will be cited and um, you could potentially hurt somebody. It's very dangerous. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Colonel, let me ask you, why is seatbelt use so important? This is a very important question and one is near and dear to us all. Uh, bottom line, buckling up is the single most effective thing that you can do to really protect yourself in a crash. Um, this is a very profound and direct statement, yet so many people don't take heed. You have a 50% chance of surviving a crash without a seatbelt. That's, that's unacceptable. And, they, and these are all things that you have direct control over. Currently in Tennessee, the unrestrained fatal rate it's 46%. Now, that's a lot of people that's losing their lives unnecessarily. It's even greater in West Tennessee, which is at 54%. Again, this is something that you have total control over, and we ask of you to wear your safety belt. If you don't wear your seatbelt, you can be ejected from your vehicle. All ejections are, are typically deadly, very lethal. If you are eject, ejected, you also have a run the possibility of injuring or killing another passenger. Sometimes people will think that it's okay not to wear your seatbelt if you're driving for a short distance or very close to your home. We're asking you not to think like that, not to do that. Most fatal crashes happen within 25 miles of home. And parents, we're asking you to do your part to model that behavior that you want to see your children to emulate. Make sure that your children are always properly restrained, no matter what. And parents, we're asking you to be that example because as you buckle up, your children will buckle up also. That's a really good point. Um, a lot of people think that just because they're 
riding around here or there that they can put their child on their lap and that they could do pretty much anything that they want to and they don't realize that a seat belt is so important and so vital. Uh, Director Lewis, I know that there's some survey research that talks about demographics and seatbelt use. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Yes, Ariel, we, we do have a seatbelt survey, survey that we do uh, regularly. And that survey shows that the demographic from eight, age 18 to 34 males uh, do not wear their seat belts uh, as much as other areas, uh, other uh, demographics do. Uh, and, and a lot of that, I feel like, is due to the fact that particularly in, in uh, rural Tennessee, there is a lot of farmland. And a lot of times uh, the farmers have pickup trucks and they jump in their truck to go from one field to another, may get on the roadway for a short period of time. Uh, but that is an issue uh, that we find that that demographic uh, and age group is uh, less likely to wear a seatbelt. Uh, and it's very alarming because they're young and they should know better. Uh, but uh, that's what we're seeing in our survey that we have uh, done recently. Thank you for sharing that. I know that, you know, if you do live in a rural area and you grew up just driving dirt roads and back roads, you, you may not believe that a seatbelt is necessary, but it is. It's very vital. It's very important. Um, and so we have to make sure that everybody knows that. Let's go ahead and take a question from the public. We have a comment here that somebody brought attention to us. So let me read it to you guys. I drive I-40 every day to and from work and through the construction area. I am passed by speeding big trucks and cars every day, all day, very dangerous. I wanted to take a video, but didn't. Well, thank you for not taking a video because that would be distracted driving, but I would like to give this to Colonel Stewart. Would you be able to respond to this? Sure, sure. Thank you for that comment. This, this is something that we hear a lot, especially in, in work zones. We're working very closely with our, our TDOT partners, and we, we put together enforcement campaigns from time to time of which we address this. So um, we will make sure that we take a look at the, the recent data and, and, and highlight these areas that we need to take a closer look at. And this was actually a great topic to bring up because the move over law is very important. If you are driving near a construction zone or you see someone who is on the side of the road in an emergency situation, you have to get over. You have to give them space and you should slow down. So we want to thank Jared for asking that question and, and prompting us to that topic. Um, Colonel, I want to ask you, you had mentioned previously that fatal crashes happen most often when you're only 25 miles from home. Tell us about that. Well, a, a lot of crashes do uh, occur when you're, you're closer to home. I think the tendency is, is for us to start taking our mind off of operating the vehicle. We start thinking about what we're going to do when we get home. We have a tendency to really relax. And then it's at that point in time that maybe someone pulls out in front of you or uh, some, some other incident occurs that you're not quite ready for. So again, we, we ask you to pay attention, to stay focused on operating your vehicle at all times, no matter how far away you are or how close you are to home. And always wear your safety belt and don't drive distracted. That's a very good point, thank you. Director Lewis, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about another major issue. Why is pedestrian safety so important? Pedestrian safety is very important simply because at some point in time, everyone is a pedestrian. And we just want to make certain that pedestrians are taken care of, they're protected. Uh, our vehicles protect the driver of the, of the vehicle with the safety equipment. But when you're walking and you're a pedestrian and you're walking on the sidewalk, or attempting to cross the roadway uh, in a safe manner, uh, then you're vulnerable to uh, not, you're, you're not gonna be protected by any special piece of equipment. So it's very important that drivers and pedestrians take note of the seriousness of how important it is to be safe uh, in, while you're a pedestrian. Um, 
you know, in 2018, a pedestrian was killed uh, nationwide of, on average every 84 minutes due to a traffic crash. And that's just absolutely amazing to me. But it, the fact is that more pedestrian fatalities occur uh, in urban areas rather than in rural areas. And we, you know, we've got to look out for, for pedestrians with Halloween coming up. We've got to make certain that we take note of that. Uh, in 2018, also, alcohol was involved uh, for the driver or the pedestrian uh, in 48 percent of all fatal pedestrian crashes nationwide. That's almost 50 percent of either the driver or the pedestrian uh, was under the influence of some type of, uh, of, of alcohol. Uh, drivers must always pay attention and drive sober. Pedestrians need to do the same thing. A lot of times you see a pedestrian walking a sidewalk or attempting to cross the street uh, and, and they're on their cell phone and they're walking and they're not paying attention. So it's always, we, we've always got to make certain that we as drivers pay attention to what that pedestrian is going to be doing. We don't know if they see us or not. So we need to slow down and make certain that we, we know that what they're going to do. And, you know, uh, if, a lot of times when we come up to an intersection and it's right on turn, right on red after uh, stop, uh, a lot of times people don't slow down very much. They just, they don't even come to a stop. They'll continue the turn. And a lot of times that pedestrian is attempting to cross uh, that roadway and, and a crosswalk. Uh, those are the type of things that the drivers have got to take, um, uh, pay more attention to. And those are the things also that pedestrians have to pay attention to is watching out uh, for the vehicles that are coming. That's a really good point, especially in bringing up Halloween, Halloween weekend. You wouldn't really think as a driver to look out for pedestrians that maybe are in bar areas or may have consumed alcohol. That may not be something that you think about, but you have to be aware of, of other people. And the reality is, yes, pedestrians have their responsibility to abide by traffic laws. But if you get into a crash with a vehicle versus a pedestrian, that pedestrian is not going to win. So we really need our drivers to take a lot of care, a lot of exercise, do care and make sure they take these laws seriously. Colonel, that, let me that's, ask. That's oh, very true. I, I wanted to add that we've had 123 pedestrian fatalities so far this year in Tennessee. 123 pedestrians have been killed. So uh, the point that you made, absolutely, we, we've got to pay attention. The driver needs to pay attention. The pedestrian needs to pay attention uh, so we can reduce these fatalities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Colonel Stewart, can you tell us what are some things that pedestrians can do to stay safe, especially for Halloween weekend? All right. Thank you for that question. Um, uh, first and foremost, Halloween falls on a Saturday this year so we were expecting there to be more parties we're expecting alcohol to to uh, be involved in these these uh these party events and um we want the public and everyone to know that we, we want everyone to be out enjoy yourself do what you need to do in order to keep yourself safe but those people that are out trick-or-treating those people that are out uh are walking through some of the neighborhoods and all i think it's very important that you wear light colored uh colored clothing, um, but it takes some type of light, some type of uh, uh, instrument with you that, that, that's going to light you up. Never, ever put yourself in a situation where you assume that the driver sees you. Take your time. Make sure that, that the, the driver of, of the vehicle sees you as you're crossing and, and don't assume anything. Those, those are really great points. And I remember trick-or-treating as a kid and we took flashlights with us because we wanted to make sure that, that we could be seen. Because at night, if you're not wearing reflective clothing or if you're not wearing anything that can attract light, you're nearly invisible to a driver until they pull up right on you. So we want to keep our children safe for sure. We want to make sure that anyone who is enjoying any Halloween festivities is being safe as well. So yeah, everybody do what you can to be safe and, and just be aware. We all have to do our part. Uh, Colonel Stewart, let's talk about distracted driving. You mentioned previously that that was a major issue, and, and people may not be aware of the Tennessee hands-free law since it went into effect 
in 2019. So what should people know about the Tennessee hands-free law? That's a great question. We get this question quite often. Uh, uh, it, it's very important to understand that the Tennessee hands-free law is a it's an extra tool for law enforcement to use to help keep people safe. Uh, it, it's important to recognize that it is illegal for a driver to hold a cell phone or a mobile device with any part of their body while they're operating a the vehicle. Uh, it is illegal for you to write, send, or read any text-based message uh, to watch a video or a movie on a cell phone or, or mobile device. It is also illegal for you to record or broadcast a video with a cell phone. Uh, th this is very common. The penalties for these, these types of uh, actions uh, at times can be very, very severe. A first offense violation of the hands-free law is a $50, $50 fine. Uh, the third offense or higher or any violation that causes a crash, a car crash, that fine will be $100. And any violation in a work zone where the workers are present or a violation in a marked school zone where the flashers are, are operating is a $200 fine. Uh, troopers have increased the number of citations that's been written for this offense. We've increased that by 51%. It is unnecessary. It is unnecessary for us to have to issue citations because it, it should be very, very well known. And we're seeking voluntary compliance, we're looking for people to help us all, keep us all safe. Thank you. And uh, we're kind of entering a stage where using Bluetooth and using earpieces and other hands-free devices are much more common and much much more popular and they're widely available and they're much more convenient really i mean it's so much easier to be able to speak using voice text or whatever it may be versus trying to to text and drive so we do want to encourage people to look into those devices and items to help you drive safer because it really can be a matter of life or death and it could be a matter of a socially distant citation that comes your way director lewis Distracted driving, we know, is more than just texting and driving. So what are some of the other ways that people can be distracted behind the wheel? That's a good question, uh, Ariel. And just to get back to texting just for a, a, a second, uh, a stat that's very alarming is, is that when you text, it usually takes about five seconds. And, and they, have, they have tested this and statistics show that if you text for five seconds and take your eyes off the roadway for five seconds, that's just like if you're driving 55 miles an hour, that's just like driving the length of a football field with your eyes closed. And can you imagine doing that day or night, driving uh, the length of a football field 100 yards with your eyes closed in traffic? That That is very alarming and scary. But not only texting and talking on the phone and using your cell phone is, is a distracted driving um, issue, but just anything that you do in your vehicle that takes away your focus uh, on your driving, uh, whether it be eating, you know, you see people all the time eating and driving. Uh, you see people a lot of time that are reading the newspaper or reading a book or reaching over in the seat to get something that may have fallen off into the floorboard on the other side. That is true. That, that is also uh, distracted driving. So I just want to make certain that everybody understands it, not it does not necessarily have to pertain to your cell phone to be distracted while you're driving. It can be these other issues, uh, and we see those quite often as well. Thank you. We also know that the passengers in your vehicle can be very distracting. You don't really think about that as a driver sometimes, but people that are talking to you, laughing, joking, or making you angry or uh, interacting with you, taking your mind off of the road can be very, very distracting, especially if you have children or you have animals in the vehicle. So it's very important to make sure before you even leave the driveway, make sure your GPS is set, make sure your children are properly restrained and have a snack or whatever it is they need. If you have an animal, make sure it is kept how it's supposed to be because your number one job is to focus on the road when you are driving. 
Thank you for that. Let me ask you, Director, let's shift over and talk about drunk driving since we are approaching Halloween itself. What are some safety tips to prevent drunk driving during Halloween weekend? Well, it's, uh, it's as simple as uh, don't drink and drive. It's as simple as that. But if you're going to drink, please have a designated driver. Uh, use a, a, uh, a ride sharing program uh, that, that are out there, a taxi, Uber, whatever uh, uh, company you may want to use. Ask a friend uh, to drive you to and from or wherever if you're going to have a party. As the colonel mentioned earlier, there since Halloween this, this year is on Saturday night, there will be a lot of parties. And ironically, Halloween is one of the highest uh, holidays, if you will, that uh, we, we see a lot of drunk driving. People that normally may not drink uh, may go to a Halloween party and have a, a drink or two and think that they're okay. But it's been a proven fact that if you have one drink or two drinks or whatever, it slows your reaction time and it slows your, your ability. It, it hinders your ability to make good judgment. And particularly when we have children on the streets trick-or-treating, walking down the sidewalks, crossing the street to get from neighbor to neighbor. Uh, the last thing that those children need and parents need is to have someone that's been drinking, driving down that street. So I just want to make certain everybody understands that uh, if you're going to drink, please don't drive. And if you're going to drive, don't drink. As simple as that. Uh, so, you know, just take precautions. Um, Get a, get a ride, get a safe ride to your next location that you're going. Uh, just remember about the children this weekend that are going to be out there and the chance that you take of having a tragedy happen just because you want to take a drink or two at a party. Mm. That's very good points. And I also wanted to mention that if you are hosting uh, Halloween festivities or a party yourself, you are also responsible for making sure that the people, your attendees are responsible in getting home. So if you allow somebody to leave your house after they've been drinking and they cause a crash, you know, that's something that's, that you're going to be held accountable for as well. So just make sure that everyone has a plan. The best thing you can do is plan to have, have, have a plan A and have a plan B because things happen, but don't ever get behind the wheel. There are too many options. There's too many alternatives to get behind the wheel. So Colonel Stewart, what are the consequences of drinking and driving? Very good question. We get this a lot. And uh, uh, simply put, drinking and driving is one of the most common and most lethal crimes in our country. Uh, you can kill yourself or someone else in a crash. Uh, driving drunk increases your chances of striking someone that may be walking down the side of the walk or Maybe someone is perfectly legal in a crosswalk, but you still strike them. Uh, it also increases your chances of driving off the roadway, losing control of your vehicle, or even falling asleep at the wheel. As been mentioned before, hey, plan ahead. Make sure, make sure that you have a designated driver. Make sure that you take part of with Uber or Lyft, any of the ride sharing services and to help you to have a much safe trip. Now, when you're drunk, you're less likely to wear your seatbelt also. Um, you're less likely to drive the speed limit and, and follow the traffic laws. Simply put, DUI is a 100% preventable crime. You should plan ahead and don't plan to drink and drive. That's a very good point. Well, I appreciate you guys being here today and addressing some of these issues and discussing them with us because they're all very, very important. And I just want to remind everyone that the Department of Safety Facebook page that you are on right now has a lot of information and resources and data related to the topics that we discussed today. So please feel free to look for more information and, and ask us any questions you may have. I'm going to go ahead and and wrap things up because this concludes today's episode of Talking Traffic Safety. I would like to thank our special guests for joining us today, 
Director Buddy Lewis from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office and Colonel Derek Stewart from the Tennessee Highway Patrol. Um, I'm going to ask you, Colonel, is there anything you would like to say as your closing remarks? Sure. Uh, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us today to raise awareness to for some of the challenges that we're facing this year on the roadways of our state. We're asking for volunteer, uh, voluntary compliance. We're seeking those individuals that will voluntarily obey the laws. Our goal is to make you more aware through our education and not necessarily through ticket writing. We're asking you to do your part. But let's make Tennessee a safer place to live and to work. Thank you. Thank you. Director Lewis, do you have some closing remarks? Thank you, Ariana. It's been a pleasure to be with everyone uh, this afternoon. And uh, I just want to say thank you for everyone for, who, has, who have joined our, our conversation today and listened. And uh, Colonel, it's been a, a pleasure to be with you this afternoon as, as well. Uh, the, the, the bottom line is we all care about your safety. Every, every topic that we've discussed today is a serious issue in the state of Tennessee and nationwide. Uh, we've talked about seat belts. We've talked about impaired driving. We've talked about speeding, pedestrians. We've talked about distracted driving. All of those issues are issues that cost people their lives each and every day. And so we just want you all to know that we're asking for your help to help us help of the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. And I know it is of the THP is to save lives. And that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're doing. We're asking for your help. As the Colonel mentioned, we're asking for voluntary compliance with all of these laws. We need your help. The life that you save may be someone that you know, may be a relative, may be a parent, may be a child. It may be your own life. So we just ask that you comply with these laws. Uh, if we could help you in any way at the Tennessee Highway Safety Office, please feel free to contact us. We're here for you. We're committed to doing what we need to do to make your life better and easier and safer on the Tennessee roadways. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. If we didn't get to your question and if you would like to uh, send us any more information or request any more information, email info at tntrafficsafety.org. Everyone take care and drive safe.